Hey guys, welcome back to our second video. So this time we're going to be talking about our high schools and uh, the differences between them. So as you can probably tell from the title of this video, mm -hmm. our high schools were a little bit different. And you're probably thinking right now, oh, they're probably just exaggerating. Uh, they can't be like, the worst and the best in the nation. And while that is a little bit true, it's actually not too far from the truth. Disclaimer, I love my high school. I got so much out of my high school. It might not be the best, but you know what? It's the best in my heart. Yep, so uh, up on the screen now, you'll be able to see the rankings for my high school. Mm -hmm. I went to Academic Magnet High School, and right now you can see it's ranked number two in the nation. So I wasn't kidding when I said it was the best high school. It fluctuates between numbers probably one to maybe closer to 10 at times. I know just last year it was number one in the nation. We had like t-shirts that are like, oh, number one in the nation. It was super cool. So you can see uh, here, it's yeah, it's number one in all of South Carolina. Uh, it's a magnet high school. It's pretty high up there in STEM. Uh, and pretty much every category, 100%, 100%, 99.999. Now Julia's high school. Well, so as you can see, it's at my high school ranked number 8,566 in the nation. Last year it was actually ranked around like number 5,500-ish. So you know what? My high school has improved a lot. My high school improved a thousand places last year. How many did your high school like improve? Yeah, I think we went down by one. Yeah, so yeah. exactly. Mm. So you know what? I'm improving and you're not. <laughs> yep, all right. Well, I guess you got us there. But anyway, so you, uh, you're probably wondering like what are the differences between these high schools mm -hmm. that cause this like big disparity like why is one so much better than the other now up here on the screen we're gonna have some stats for you so for my high school we have about 38 full-time teachers uh, and the total enrollment looks to be about a bit over 600 right now it's definitely been growing since I was there uh, and as you can see we have about 20 percent minority so it's not like it's all just uh, the cream of the crop, all one one race, all this is why it's so good. No, there's like definitely some diversity there. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the big things you'll notice is the economically disadvantaged is only 2%. Now for Julia's high school. For my high school, so when I went to the high school, I was actually the only non-Caucasian in my entire high school. So for a lot of people, I'm the first Asian like classmate, or the first, their first Asian friend ever. So I'm saying I've never even met an Asian before. And you're like, wow, this is 21st century. How is that possible? Well, in central Pennsylvania, it is very possible. And even now, there's only 5% minority enrolled in my high school. And also, as you can see, the total economically disadvantaged is about 40%. Overall, the area I went to school is not a very rich area. So, you know, you can think of this central Pennsylvania as a rust belt. So we have a lot of coal miners, a lot of farmers, and both industries are kind of dying. So, yeah. Yeah, and as you can see, like our high schools are around the same size. We have around the same amount of teachers. Uh, but, you know, the, the numbers that really matter, you know, that economically disadvantaged is definitely a big driver, I think, here for why our high schools are ranked so differently. But yeah, moving forward, we just want to tell you like a little bit about uh, the specifics of our high school, something that you won't just find online. Mm -hmm. And if you are curious to find out these facts that we posted on the screen for your high school, there's a link in the description where you can go and look up your high school. Uh, but anyways, so for me, my high school, uh, we're always around top 10 in the nation. And one thing that uh, goes with that, we have a lot of people every year who go to the academies like me, and I had a couple classmates that did. And then also, uh, Ivy League schools are very popular. Mm -hmm. uh, the year before me, there was a kid who was 16 years old who got into Harvard. Uh, they put like posters all around the school. It was, it was pretty crazy. Uh, for example, AP classes as well are a huge thing in my high school. You have to take four AP classes to even graduate, and every single other class is pretty much all honors classes. So you'll see a lot of that there. We even have a class called Senior Thesis where you write like this big paper, like so they range from 20 to 30 pages to over 100. And you do your own research and it's almost like a college graduation uh, essay kind of thing. But yeah, that's, that's my high school in a nutshell. Yeah, I'd say I'm quite jealous. That's definitely not the case for my high school. Um, so for my high school, so first we have very few AP classes to choose from. I think actually by senior year I've taken all the available AP classes and none of them are very hard. Um, so the average for my AP classes, the average AP score is about a 1. 
Yeah, ours was probably three to a five. Yeah, exactly. And like, it's not heard of that you have to take AP classes to graduate. Um, so like for me and the class Victoria, both of us, our AP classes for senior year, we got one for our AP classes. Honestly, it's not us. It's just, it's not competitive enough. The teacher, you know, like the teaching ability is, I guess it's just the students don't have the drive to do super well. Um, yeah, so with our teachers, like they were always, you know, willing to help us, very supportive. I'd say we had, we had very good teachers, which made a, a big difference for us. Yeah, I still remember that for my AP chemistry class, so first everyone in that class got a one for their AP test, um, but for the AP chemistry class, the teacher, she's very knowledgeable and she's not very nice, and she's, she is very nice, but she doesn't know how to teach, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, one time we're doing labs, and I just overheard a conversation from the table behind me. So they were selling marijuana, and I actually went over and they were trying to sell me marijuana. So basically, <laughs> half of the class, they just use AP chemistry as a business meetup to figure out how they're planning like to sell marijuana kind of this is just pretty it's just pretty much stuff it, it's not like breaking bad stuff yeah and as you can see like my high school it definitely had some of that stuff around but it wasn't it wasn't as prevalent like in ap chemistry class it was a competitive class to get into like you had to do well in your previous courses if you wanted to even uh basically apply to get into ap mm -hmm. chemistry class uh, but there are some bad things about my high school, I'd say. Uh, coming out of middle school, I went to middle school over in California, and I was uh, the, actually the valedictorian in my middle school. I did really well in my middle school. Whoa. Uh, and so coming from that environment where I was like, oh, the best, this is so easy, to an environment where it's like everyone is so good, it's, mm -hmm. it was difficult uh, because I kind of lost a lot of my motivation. And I, while I wasn't the worst student in high school, I definitely wasn't as good as I could have been. And uh, I ended up probably performing towards the bottom of my class, which is saying something, seeing as though everyone was very good in my high school, mm -hmm. but still. Uh. Yeah, and I'm the opposite. I went to a middle school in China, and I went to one of the best middle schools in China. Um, so my middle school is probably similar to Philip's high school, where everyone's super competitive, everyone gets super high test score and stuff like that. So like after, with that background, with that competitiveness, with that mindset, after coming to my high school, it was very easy for me to do better than all the other um, high school students. And therefore, I stood out a lot. I got a lot of opportunities, um, like for all the free summer camps or like all the student leadership. My school was me up, which really helped me to get into the Naval Academy. Yeah, and with that, like if you take anything from this video, after you graduate high school, it's a clean slate, no matter where you go, but especially the academy. We have people from every single state all around the country and even mm -hmm. the world. Like once you go there, it's it's a new start. And you make your like you you make a new person if you want to. You know, you can do extremely well or you can do extremely poorly based on your mindset and how you choose to do. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. We appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll be posting plenty more content. <laughs> Thank you. See ya.